On this day, Bosnian Muslims remember the Srebrenica massacre, a somber day when more than 8,000 Bosnian Muslims were killed by the Bosnian Serb army. In July of 1995, Bosnia was the scene of the worst genocide in Europe since World War II. Thousands of Muslim Bosniaks were slaughtered in a brutal campaign of ethnic cleansing. Decades on, hundreds of people and their remains are still missing. And although what happened in Bosnia was one of the most recent massacres on the European continent, the history of Europe is actually riddled with massacres and genocides, with victims of all faiths and ethnicities. Here's a brief look at some of them. The Holocaust was Nazi Germany's organized murder and extermination of approximately 6 million European Jews. It's thought that two-thirds of the Jews in Europe were killed between 1941 and 1945 during World War II, as part of the so-called Final Solution. The Nazis also murdered 6 to 10 percent of the total Polish population, including 3 million Polish Jews. This was not a first for Jews in Europe who had suffered numerous pogroms. During the Russian Empire in the 19th and 20th centuries, the following pogroms took place in Eastern Europe. The Odessa pogroms, the 1881 Warsaw pogrom, the 1903 Kishinev pogrom, the 1905 Kiev pogrom, and the Bialystok pogrom in 1906. After the 1917 fall of the Russian Empire, the pogroms continued, as Jews fell victim to Eastern European power struggles. From 1864 to 1867, Russia killed or deported more than 90% of the Circassian population, a Northwest Caucasian ethnic group native to Circassia, present-day Russia. An estimated 2 million people fell victim to the Russian occupation, leading to a mass Circassian exodus to Turkey and the Middle East. Many European countries also committed massacres and atrocities as they colonized and invaded other countries and territories around the world. Here's a look at three of these massacres. One of the worst massacres in Africa happened during Belgium's campaign in the Congo from 1885 to 1908. The king of one of Europe's smallest states, King Leopold II of Belgium, was responsible for the murder of 10 to 15 million of the Congo's population, the second largest country in Africa. The Berlin Conference of 1884 to 1885, which divided Africa between European countries, handed over the Congo to King Leopold II as personal property. Leopold's exploitation and occupation of the Congo was committed in the name of extracting and producing rubber. He effectively turned all of the Congo into a slave plantation, with the backbreaking work enforced by Leopold's colonial army. Entire villages were forced to work under what is known as the red rubber system, a labor policy created to maximize extraction of rubber and profit. When people refused to work, they were beaten, whipped, or shot, and tens of thousands were killed in failed uprisings. When the East India Company and the British government controlled the Indian subcontinent from 1865 to 1943, Britain's ruthless economic agenda and its exploitation of India led to several famines. One example is the 1876 to 1878 famine in Madras, where four to five million Indians perished. Britain's insistence on exporting tons of food to other parts of the empire left the local population and sometimes even their own troops stationed in India to starve. The 1943 Bengal famine gained the most international attention. At the time of the famine, Britain had exported more than 70,000 tons of rice between January and July 1943, enough food to keep almost half a million people alive. The death toll was estimated to be between one and a half and three and a half million people, including those who threw themselves in front of trains to escape the anguish of hunger. When France colonized Algeria in 1830, it was considered to be a part of France, or a French department as it was referred to. During 132 years of colonization, at least five million people were killed. The crimes committed against the Algerian population included torture, murder, displacement, and the confiscation of agricultural land. France even went on to do nuclear tests in Algeria. The early resistance resulted in around one-third of the native Algerian population being killed by the 1870s. By the mid-20th century, Algerian independence had cost the lives of more than one and a half million martyrs. Algeria today is still seeking an apology from France for its colonial occupation. Algerian President Abdel Majid Taboun said in 2020 that his country received a half apology from France and that they are still waiting for the rest. But beyond the apologies of European countries for crimes committed during their colonial past, will a discussion for reparations to post-colonial states for the consequences of colonialism and slavery ever be put on the table?